Hello, I'm Food Daniel. This tutorial is not about a specific riff, although we will be doing a specific riff, but rather I'm here just to give you a few ideas as to how best to maximize the value of the printed riffs that you exercise. Okay, the riff we're going to be using comes from Double Bass Drumming and Power Fills Workout by Matt Sorum and Sam Aliano. This is an excellent book for drummers like me who don't think of ourselves as particularly good at double bass. Now, you know, a top-notch death metal drummer probably can do all this stuff in his sleep. But uh, for drummers like me, the very, very useful tool. Okay. The riff we're going to be doing specifically is this one right here. Oh, if you're a purist. Page 101, exercise 10. It's this one right here, and as you can see, it's a two-beat phrase repeated twice. Okay. Played on the snare with single strokes. It would go... That's what we're going to be doing for this entire tutorial. You know, it's one two measure phrase repeated twice. Now, again, as printed or as stated in the book, the idea is to play just single strokes on the snare right, left, right, left, right, left, right, boom, boom, right, boom, boom, etc. Okay. But, once you get the hang of doing that, and once you can do it at a speed that you're comfortable with and proud of, where do you go from there? Well, I'm here to show you a couple ways you can still use the same riff to develop your skills even more by mixing it up a bit. After I show you how this riff is played, we're then going to play around with it a bit. We'll do the same thing, but with different sticking or orchestrating it by playing it on different drums instead of just the snare. And then finally, we'll incorporate just this two-beat phrase into you know, actual riffs because you know this this fill you know it's a fun thing to learn but you know knowing a fill doesn't really help you much you know on stage or with your band if you can't plug it into riffs so that's what we're going to do to wrap it up okay so right now here's what this riff sounds like as printed you know on the snare single strokes we'll play it four times excuse me we'll play it four times at a slow tempo then we'll play it four times at a moderate tempo and then four times at a real fast tempo here we go Okay, and that's what it sounds like. It's a lot of fun to play, especially when you get it to good, fast tempos. Now, you could stop there and say, okay, you've mastered this riff, but here we go. Let's mix it up a bit. Okay, now we're going to do the same riff, only this time we're going to do something different with the sticking, okay? Okay, so the same two beat phrase repeated. The first time, it's going to be just as we just did it. You know, right, left, right, left, right, left, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, no sweat. But the second time, we're going to do a six-stroke roll. See that? Right, left, left, right, left, right. There, I just blew it. Right, left, left, right, right, left, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom. This is an idea I got from watching and listening to uh, Mr. Will Garcia, the drummer for Star Destroyer. This guy has the best six-stroke rolls I have ever heard. He's excellent at it, and of course, whenever I listen to a drummer do something I can't do, I get all jealous, and I feel the need to try to get the hang of it myself. I'm getting there. Now, the psychologically difficult part about doing something like this, going back and playing a riff that you can already do real fast, but then mixing it up with the different sticking, so you got to be patient with yourself because you won't be able to play it quite as fast as you did before, and there is the temptation, or at least I know I feel the temptation, you know, to throw up your hands and say, hell with it. Why learn it with a different sticking? Because I can already play it, you know, nice and fast with ordinary single strokes. So you got to be patient with yourself and accept that, that initially at first, you will be playing it much slower until you really get the hang of doing these six-stroke rolls. But again, that's how improvement happens. You know, be patient enough to move the ball backwards, so to speak, so you can later move the ball forwards and score that goal when you get the hang of this stuff enough that you can play it as fast as you can play single strokes. Okay, so we're going to play it this way, single strokes the first time, 
and then the six stroke roll the second time. Again, we'll do it four times slowly, four times moderate, and then four times super fast. Here we go. Okay, that wasn't bad. Now, as you noticed, when I was playing it fast, it wasn't quite as fast as it was in the previous clip where I was doing single strokes. That's okay. Because again, as you're developing six stroke rolls, it's not gonna be you know, as super fast as your single stroke rolls. But it'll come, it'll improve the more you practice it. Now, the way to tell you're doing your six stroke rolls right, no matter what tempo, is if your six-stroke rolls sound indistinguishable from your single strokes. If your single strokes sound pa 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 and your six-stroke rolls also sound pa 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 you know you're doing it right. Now then, let's do the same thing over again, only this time, let's add another twist. Instead of playing it all on a snare drum where it sounds like a machine gun, let's make it kind of musical by orchestrating it. We'll do the exact same riff over again, where the first time where it's single strokes, that'll still be on the snare just as it was before. But the six stroke roll, we're going to orchestrate it. The right hand will be played on a tom, while the left hand will stay on the snare. So it'll sound like... You'll hear what I mean. Yeah, so the right hand will be on a tom, and the left hand will still be on the snare. And again, we'll do it four times slowly, four times moderate, and four times fast. Here we go. Okay, that's a lot of fun. Now, as I said before, however much fun it may be, it's not too useful to the songs you're performing with your band if you can't plug it into the riffs, if you can't segue into and out of the fill from the riffs. So to wrap it up, we're going to do this again, four times slowly, four times moderate, four times fast, but we're only going to do the sec this second half here. You know, right, left, left, right, right, left, ba boom, boom, ba boom, boom, as the end of a two measure riff. So we'll play a measure and a half of a riff and then this fill here. Because again, you know, you got to be able to plug it into and out of your riffs if it's going to have any usefulness to you during the songs. Here we go.
And there you have it. We've taken a simple one measure phrase and got a lot of mileage out of it by doing some variations on it. Did variations with the sticking, variation with orchestration, and then plugging it into a rhythm. And you can do this with any riff at all you hear or read. Yes, when you're, when you're reading off the page, as I do, yes, you want to be good at playing it as written, and you want to build it up as fast as you can, and that's a wonderful thing. But once you get, get it to your satisfaction, once you get each riff to a speed and control that you're proud of and comfortable with, that doesn't mean it has to end there. You know, it doesn't become useless. It's not something to discard like a toy in the hands of a seven-year-old who's got sick of it. Mix it up a bit. Mix up the sticking. Mix up the heads that are being hit. You can get a ton of mileage out of it. Just one simple riff. You can do lots of different things with it and really stimulate creativity. I hope I've helped you do that today. Thank you.